Hey guys, welcome back to Jason Unleashed. Hey, Jason Carter here. Thank you for watching. Uh, my double header for today continues with my next guest. She is out of this world, incredible, a goddess, a queen. My guest is Amber Riley. Yes, we love her ugly and everything after camp, everything you name it. Now, she is here to talk about something that is so important, so crucial, and that is her new initiative, Unmutiny. And I'm gonna let her tell you all about it because it's, it's, it's so involved and so essential and so needed in this unprecedented time that we're living in. It's a woman-led, woman-founded initiative that's, that will pretty much end the silence of black voices and entertainment. So. With that said, waiting for her to chime in. Just a few, you guys know the drill. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up, hit me, hit me up, hit me up, hit me up below in the comment section, and I'll get to the questions as soon as I can. And again, Amber Riley, she is here. I think she's gonna send the request, or maybe she's already said hi. Boom. Let's see. Give me a sec. Let me see if I can go find her. Uh, boom. Uh. Hi, everyone. Hi. I see, I see all the comments. So guys, you've been waiting a while for this one. I know. I'm super excited to have her on. Amber, where you at? Hey, Joel. All right. Boom. It's coming. Amber. 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 Hi. Yo. Hi, Amber. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome to Jason Unleashed. Thank you so much for coming on. No problem. Hi, can you can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, cool, cool. Because like it's kind of there's kind of a, a delay, a delay in in the internet connection. Maybe maybe it's me. You, I have the circle. Oh, there you go. There you are. Are we good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, first of all, good to see you. Thank you for being on. I'm excited to talk to you. You know, I was sliding in those DMs for weeks. Like Amber, come on my show and talk about. <laughs> This new initiative you have, because you are lighting it up. You're, you're passionate, you're involved, you're mobilized, you're engaged. You're, you're, like you said, the old you used to care. Now you just don't give up, and a right. mutiny is where we're at. So please tell the audience what a mutiny is and how it's going to change the game. Um, well, a mutiny is a black woman founded um, and led movement. Um, there's mostly black women that reached out to me after everything that happened, uh, black actors that reached out to me after everything that happened um, about telling me about their experiences. Um, so a mutiny basically is here to end black silence in the entertainment industry. Wow. It's the whole power structures accountable for suppressing black voices and confronting microaggressions um, with courage. Uh, and, we kind of put that um, together to let people know that I'm not trying to start a lynch mob. Like, that's not what this is. <laughs> it's not to go off and, you know, create a group of people that just want to, you know, fight. But I was getting all of these stories um, from Samantha Ware, whose who's bravery, like, kind of catapulted all of this for me. Um, of telling her story, uh, I was getting so many stories of people doing the same, wanting to liberate themselves. Yeah. And um, so I was like, well, what do I do with all of this, you know, frustration? And I just went to a good friend of mine. Her name is Kenya Parham. Um, she is she used to be a political strategist, and now she is into just social awareness and helping people start their foundations and she's using all of that know-how in helping people socially now and so I went to her we had a long ass six-hour meeting um, and we sat and we created a structure uh, that I can't talk about yet but um, it's coming it's coming it's coming it's something that you know we just wanted to be I, that's why I want people to follow Unmute Me on, on Instagram and follow the hashtag and tell their stories because um, what we are planning is, is, is obviously needed. Right. And like I said, it's essential. I'm, I've been talking about Unmute Me for like the last week now because a lot of people, when they found out you were coming on Jason Unleashed, they were like, well, like you mentioned Samantha Ware. And look, let me need to get into Leah Michelle, but I understand your frustration when you want to speak out 
about about something and you've been silent and you feel like you are jeopardizing or, or burning a bridge or whatever because you've been made to feel like your voice doesn't matter. And so the consequences of you speaking out against any kind of injustice are, are greater, even though the people who would hold you accountable never cared about you in the first place. So I get the frustration. So I'm glad a mutiny is here. And I'm glad that you were able to have a platform. I mean, you have 1.2 million followers that are looking for a, a safe space, really. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it's, um, it's one thing to be, um, I always say this, and, like, I hope I don't offend people when I say it. Like other Speak your truth. And, Speak your truth. Stuff when I say it, but um, I'm just not interested in celebrity activism. It right. doesn't, you know. Performative. Performative. Yeah, it's very performative to me. And um, it's, I, I guess in some ways it is needed because sometimes people need the, the song and dance to get interested, but I'm more uh, I'm more interested in what what are we doing after action, and, right? Yeah, and so for for a mutiny, you know, I had all the passion and we had all the anger and we had all the frustration, and I have sh shifted my focus from okay, I'm upset that everybody's acting like they didn't know all of this stuff was going on. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm upset. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm upset that, you know, uh, people are acting like by me sharing my trauma and the things that I've gone through that I'm attacking or, you know, it's something that actually happened to me. And you don't get to tell me how to process it. Right. That part. So, um, but I, I've gone from that to really trying to figure out now, let me put my focus on how to build and how to help my community. And that, that action is, is more useful. Right. hundred percent. It's more useful. Now, not to say that voicing your frustration, calling things out, telling the truth, like yesterday, um, somebody, well, what, what you, you're tearing stuff down and all this other kind of stuff. And I said, the only thing that the truth tears down is a lie. Mm -hmm. And if you are a part of the lie, then you are just collateral damage on the way to liberty. And where is the lie in that? That is the truth, 100%. So what has the response been? Because you said you, you, you co collaborated with a friend, you created this initiative. People are here for it. Your Instagram has transformed into, even your images have become, I mean, you've always been a powerhouse, Amber. You've always Thank had you. charisma. You've always been a strong black woman in all the roles you played on and off camera, but now we're seeing your visuals mirror that even more. What has the response been from people in regards to Unmutiny? I'm sure there, I mean, you could probably have a whole blog of stories that have just probably been inundating your DMs about mm -hmm. people's experiences in the real world. I mean, I, I've had ex uh, people tell me, I wish I had to think, cause I can, I can read some of them, but uh, there was an actor that was telling me um, he went out with his uh, producers from a film that he was doing out in New Orleans and um, sorry, New Orleans. No, I, no, that's how you go. You're good. <laughs> My family's from New Orleans. They call it New Orleans and New Orleans. It's cool. Yeah. Um, and he was saying his producer and the director asked him, to go to dinner with him. It's Sean. Sean Brooks is the actor. He actually has this on his um, Instagram if anybody wants to read it. And he was saying like at the dinner, they got really drunk and he was like, you know, I was trying to be professional so I didn't, you know, partake. And they started talking about, hey, Sean, you know we're racist, right? Like flat out told him that, you're, that he's racist. That they were racist. Uh huh. And then he goes, well, can he? He was so taken aback that he said, "Well, can I ask you why?" He was like, "Well, you're racist too." He said, "No, I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not." And he said, um, "Yeah, we just don't. We don't. You know, we don't like niggers." Wow. And and alcohol is true, sir. So you know they were speaking the truth. So how, so how did he how did he handle that? So he said that he just was taken aback and he didn't know what to say because they were his producers and he was doing this film. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? And then he said the next day he went in, they acted like nothing happened. Uh This is all on his Instagram. Like, uh, you can read the full story. The full story is nuts. Like, it's it's crazy. But then at the same time, it's what people actually think and feel. Mm -hmm. It's very real. And it, it, you know, it's so you we see all these memes now, Amber, of people that are like, you know, racism is real. Like, duh it's it's not just it's not just it's not just this this trip this you know i don't know imaginary existence that people that black people or or anyone from a marginalized group of of people has yeah. been has been imagining it's a real thing and especially and you know in entertainment we move through this industry with so many microaggressions with people and you know we are a product to be bought people buy us hire us on the gig. Ryan Murphy hires you for, for Glee. I get hired for, you know, things that for, for those that are, that are watching, that don't that understand the industry. But yet with that comes um, a relinquishment of, a, of us saying, okay, you own us in some capacity. Okay. And some people, yeah. And some people take that to the next step and, and will not only try to own your talent, but try to tell you who to be in the spaces you can move in. Mm-hmm. And and but we don't but as talent we don't say anything because we work hard we sacrifice so much to be here our careers we're creatives our careers mean so much that creative endeavor is is very soulful yeah so so it's like and I'm so when you when I had read that unmutiny was about ending the silence of black voices in entertainment it resonated with me so deeply because there's been times I've worked in for outlets at gigs where being black was just checking the box but there was no engagement of me and my talent. You know, it's like, let's bring in Amber Riley, who we love her, talented, visually, she checks the box, but let's not have her do anything. Let's just have her sit there and let our non-PLC counterpart do all the work, reap the benefits, get the opportunities that you are equally, if not more, qualified for. And it's not a pity party. That's another thing that I think people are starting to, to talk is like, well, should we feel sorry for you? Should we, should we give you charity? It's like, no, no, no. We just want a seat at the table and resp- and be respected when we take a seat at that table. And see, I'm more of an abolitionist. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, fuck your table. That's me. Yeah. I don't. I, I I'm ready to create my own table. I'm ready for Black people to have autonomy over our culture, over our talent. But there's so many things that we have to do within our community for that to happen. Boom. I'm not, I'm, I'm not like, uh, it's so funny because every time, you know, we, we talk about somebody that, um, another black person that has been killed at the hands of police, so many people want to bring up black on black crime, which mm-hmm. is literally does not exist. So like, let's start there. Black on black crime was created to, it, 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 it was like propaganda created to make it seem like black people don't get along. Like we can't, we can't, uh, we can't love each other. We can't be united. We can't move forward together. We don't respect one another. When it's really just black people don't kill black other black people because they're black. Right. Just like white people don't kill other white people because they're white. It's about proximity as a po and 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 community as opposed to color. So that argument just falls because there's no such thing as white on white crime. You will never go to a white neighborhood that has killed 500 white people uh, and, and call and, it white on white crime. Right. Like that's Good point. Just, it doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense, but it, it, it's absolutely propaganda. And it's even been drilled into black people's heads that that exists. Do I know that that it is an issue? Yes. Crime is an issue in our neighborhoods. It's a, it is a symptom though. It is not the illness. The illness is poverty. The illness Mm -hmm. is no job security. The illness is um, hunger. The illness is uh, self-esteem. We, black black people are dealing with the trauma of a very, very uh, long line of, we built and you burnt it down. We've built and you torn it down. We we've created this this musical culture and you've taken it. Now you make money off of it and we don't. Mm-hmm. We've created this musical culture and now they only give us these little bitty urban charts, but they won't put us in the pop charts. But you're on right. all the charts and you're white. You know this is this is this is what has been you know created. Right. 
And so it's not victim, victimhood. We're not, we're, we're, we are not victims. We are actually survivors. Right, resiliency. We're, the most, we're resilient as hell. We have rebuilt and rebuilt communities over and over and over and over again. And just because people aren't burning crosses in the front of houses as much anymore, because that shit is happening now, we're finding people lynched, mm-hmm. black people lynched, um, does not mean that racism is not here. It has evolved as we have evolved. And it right. shows up now in monetary spaces, in right. economics, in, in ju- you know, it, it shows up now in Hollywood because mm-hmm. it shows up now in the media because the same people that own these corporations are the same people that own the media companies. You know what I'm saying? So right. it, it shows up now in different ways. So we have to, as, as black, it shows up even in the black community, how we have been trained, like, that black people need to be one way and how, right. you know, black people uh, have a problem with the LGBTQ community. That is such a, it's a, it's a, and it, and it is, and you know, I've listened to my friends and I've evolved even in that area, just getting older. Not that I've never respected the LGBTQ community, but had to understand intersectionality mm-hmm. and understand that our, the things that we deal with are different. Right. You know, and, and- and and that and there is the and there and that's that's where the rub and the rubber meets the road is that understanding and listening because I me I am LGBTQ plus right. and and my and my experience in the black community sometimes hasn't always been the most welcoming hasn't always been hasn't been the most you know protective comforting what you will you know most inclusive because of how we've been taught that. There's a stereotype one for of the black man. He's supposed to be hyper masculine. Yeah. Provide and that go, and that dates all the way back to slave days. That that's that's down. That's generational. But you you mentioned something about the black community not being a monolith. We're not we're not all we're not one thing. Right. And so yeah. and so and getting back to performative, I just want to go back to that because I do think there are some people that are non POC, there absolutely are people that are non POC that are that are that are sincere, that have integrity, yeah. and they're present in what's happening. And I've seen, I, I've been educated on so much blackness by non POC people doing work to find out, going deeper, mm-hmm. spending hours creating. Like Hannah Cranston is one um, someone who who has done a lot of work. And my friend Bryce McLay has his whole Instagram has become. Education. information on, bl- on blackness and, and that's so great yeah that's actually great i i when white people they want to tell me what they learn i'll sit and i'll listen that is amazing to me because i'm black i mm. live it so right i i don't really need to do it but thank you, <laughs> but thank you. you know what I'm saying? i saw um, that yeah and now like well touching on touching on what it is that you were talking about, we do know, like, I, I have to let people know, like, we do know and understand there are problems within our community, but let us deal with what's in right. our community. You stay the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. Let us deal with what is going on in our communities and figure out how we need to come together. But the basis of it, the basis of it, in in my opinion, is, and the illness, it, it, it is, it's the financial disparities right it's the it's the economic, socio-economical yes socio-economical racism it's it that is really the root of it and that's not blaming it on racism i need people to stop i don't mean to put it in quotes I, when i put it in quotes i mean it in a way of like i need people to stop thinking of racism as a action verb mm-hmm um, and start understanding that when we say racism, we're talking about a system. Right. Systemic we're racism. About systemic racism. Right. We're talking about, and that which affects everyone. Mm-hmm. It affects other people of color and black people right. also. Right. It's 100%. about, yeah, it's about reach, right? It's about um, access, it's about a table, a seat at the table. It's mm-hmm. about all autonom- autonomy. Mm-hmm. It's about all of those things. Um, and I, 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 I mean, I don't, <laughs> I, I have been on such a journey in these last couple of months of just discovering who I am. And we all know that a lot of beautiful things can come from struggle, right? right. 
And I went through a really horrible mental struggle at the end of last year and um, started to come uh, up like maybe around mm, October of last year and started to come out of it in, in January. And so many beautiful things have, have happened uh, with me. Um, what caused this struggle? If you don't mind, like what was it depression? Was it yeah, what? depression and anxiety? Um, dealing with that at the end of last year, which I've, I've dealt with anxiety my whole life. I just didn't know, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm well-read and I'm an educated person, but <laughs> when it comes to me, it seems like, <laughs> like you, just, that's the last person, right? <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right. Okay. No, that's for them. <laughs> like, I know what mental illness is. I, I understand. I read, you know, Dr. Caroline Leaf's books. I understand the brain. Like, that's me, but I couldn't admit to myself what was actually happening. Right. Mm-hmm. And when I finally, you know, actually my mom is the one that said, like, I think that you're, you know, dealing with depression. And I'm yeah. like, I made the most money that I've made in like a couple of years this year. There's no way that I'm dealing with depression. Like, what do you mean? I'm so happy. I've been working all year. Yeah. I was just on Disney. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> but see, but, but Amber, that's, but uh, interesting that you bring up in the last couple months that you've had like the self-reflection and you've been able to discover because I think that I think that's where a lot of people are at and when I I was clinically depressed for five years yeah and I I and I'm from I'm from a I'm from Albuquerque New Mexico and back in whatever the 2000s the conversation around mental health was nowhere what it is now and so I knew something was wrong but you just didn't know what was wrong and then you also think like you said you're successful made the most money you're Amber Riley people love like love you you are television royalty you've had success you're young you're beautiful and you think well why would i be depressed but when you start to really strip away all that amber riley is to the public and and go through like you said traumas and everything you've gone through to come to this point you've been through some shit girl and so that subconsciously takes a toll on you people don't understand that every day we roll through life and things directly and indirectly affect us coupled with the, if there's anything in the past that you've gone through, coupled with being black in America, coupled with being black in entertainment, it's a lot. And so you finally have the time right now with COVID and this quarantine and the, and, and the state of humanity to be like, <laughs> what's go- like, what has happened to me? What, what has happened? Like, who am I? Like, what is going on? And sometimes that, that's a lot to that's a lot to handle. It's a lot to swallow, and you're human. And so, I mean, a lot of people have said exactly what you said that I was depressed and didn't know it. So you got help. You're good now. Yeah, I'm good now. I got I got help. Um, at the end of, I think what it is is like I go 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 go, and yep. I just push past. Like most most black women that I know, I just go. I push past uh, um, all the feelings and the thing. I don't have time to sit in that. I know that I'm sad about this, but I don't have time to sit in that. Oh my gosh! Things that I need to do. I gotta. I gotta work. I gotta be this strong black, you know, strong black woman, and I can't, you know. And I had all of those ideas, knowing that mental health, taking care of your mental health, is very important. Right. Um. But uh, at the beginning of the year, I finally, you know, sought out a, a, a therapist and a psychiatrist. Um, I do take um, a medicine and I, I'm open about that because Good. I want people to know that it is okay if you are dealing with something mentally and you need to take medication. It's fine. There's uh, nothing wrong with it and there's no shame in it whatsoever. Depression is nothing to play with. Right. There is anxiety. And so I have more anxiety than depression, but th- you know, they say depression is and is a cup, right, they come right. together. Right. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're one and the same. And, yeah. and you know, you're, you're speaking on something right now, Amber, that I'm glad. Look, we have almost 150 50 people watching, probably thousands more watching. People are celebrating you in the comments right here. But you're talking about mental health in the Black community. And that's such a huge conversation that hasn't been happening enough. And I think, again, it goes back to weakness. And as you said, and, it's, and I'm glad that you, you itemized that because in a conversation I had with a friend it, the other day, it was about being on the go. We don't have time to, we don't have time to deal. We, we, there's no time. We have to make things happen. We, we have to work, achieve, overachieve, and then do it all over again the next day. Because say that that's- again. Say that overachieve again. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, preach on it, right? It's, 
facts. We we have to overachieve to to seem like we are the norm. Right. So President when Obama would have never gotten away with anything that is happening right now. Oh, there. Uh, their media, their, we we don't have the, the luxury privilege of being, of being mediocre. Right. We just don't have the luxury to be. Yep. We Olivia Pope's know. dad. Olivia Pope's dad on Scandal said, told his daughter, told Kerry Washington and that character, you have to be two times better. And but you know what? Again, it goes back to resiliency. It goes back to resiliency, and I think that's just at the the backbone and the in the DNA of all marginalized people of color and 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 people who have who come from those backgrounds and want more and want more. And you're, I mean, yeah. I'm glad you got help, and I'm glad you talked about that because there, you're you saying that's helping so many people right now. Please close my door. Let the puppy in. Mm-mm. They're, nope. they're so ghetto. My dogs are ghetto dogs. They're Amber, we've been anyway. we've been in quarantine for I don't know how many weeks now. What is what has been one of like the biggest things you discovered about yourself in quarantine that you're just like, damn. Oh man, I, I discovered that I can do so much on my own. I I really like my creativity and my business savvy and my ideas and my discipline, like I've realized, and that, and that's happened through therapy too. That's one thing that I did want to say too. If you're going to take medication, make sure that you are taking it from not your doctor, but a psychiatrist Mm -hmm. because they specialize in medicine and you want to be in therapy because I don't plan on being on this the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I am working toward creating um, pillars in my life that I can go back to that will help me and sustain me the rest of my life. But anyway, um uh I, yeah I've learned I've learned so much about myself um when I first started um therapy I think uh I was talking about therapist yesterday and he was like I feel like you were a, a, a mentally and emotionally not mentally but emotionally still like 13 really like still emotionally and how I relate to other people like very young you know, scared to say this, not knowing if this is okay, you know, very much so um, if I did feel something strongly and eventually I would just explode instead of being able to have an actual conversation. Right. You know, um, and now I feel like I'm like in my 20s. You know? <laughs> I think I've matured to like my 20s emotionally. <laughs> Because I'm able to um, just be myself more. That's huge. And and uh, even in public, like people are getting to know the real me. People, some people are like, uh, "Are you okay? Like, what are you doing?" I'm like, "No, this is this is me. This is who I've always been in front of my family and my friends." There it is. That's th- I think that's what that's what I'm seeing now too. Is that we've gotten we've gotten a version, and we, we're all multi layered. We all have different versions of ourselves, but I think the version now that we're seeing of Amber is just so. And I, look, authenticity comes and is comes in so many di- looks differently all the time. But I think we're seeing this new authentic Amber mm. right now. Yeah, I'm just more comfortable with myself, and I'm more comfortable with like consequences I have faith in myself more my self-esteem is 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 a lot better I thought I had good self-esteem but yeah um it's it's different when you find your self-esteem in how do I say this when you find your self-esteem in your talent Mm -hmm. as opposed to just being happy with who you are Right. I, uh, I, I know. 100%. You know. Wow. Yeah. Just being happy with who you are. And yeah. now I'm like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I find the joy in myself uh, every day. And joy, and joy is, happiness is fleeting, but joy is lasting. Yes. Happiness is fleeting, but joy is lasting. I love that. That's the I truth. love that. And Amber, like what you just said, just struck me so hard right now because we, as in this industry, we validate ourselves with booking a job. We validate ourselves with accolades and tour or whatever, whatever you do, you know. And we allow that to be the identity that 
says you matter you you're worth something and when mm-hmm. and, and and how easily that can be extracted and taken away what are you left with if that's what if you if you put all the eggs into that basket to define you you know and that's what i've learned too and i'm like okay because for a while i was like you know i was working i've always kind of worked um but i wasn't necessarily doing what i loved mm-hmm. all the time mm-hmm. um and that took a toll on me yeah. Um, but now I'm just like, I can, I can, I need to find other things that I'm interested in. Right. I need to find other. So when the work is slow, um, I have that happiness, that joy that I can find in hanging out with my niece, the joy I mm-hmm. find in working out, the joy I find in watching a, like a funny movie or reading reading I love reading books and I love learning things and I I love learning new skills and I love photography now like I'm finding other things about myself I'm on a spiritual journey right now figuring that all that out which has been very interesting because I grew up staunch Christian with a, a mother who's a minister and like you know singing on the worship team but like as I've grown older I'm like God is so much bigger than that so let me mm-hmm. figure all of that out too so it's been it's been fun. It's been frustrating. It's been up. It's been down. Um, but but that's it's the all journey, been necessary. Though. It's been necessary. Yeah. It's necess- It's so freaking necessary. I think, and it's so worth it. I'm I'm I uh, I'm so glad because I think you come to an age too, Amber, where you're like, what What do I want? You know, like not even it's not so much career, but you want to feel like real. You want to feel mm-hmm. like you saying that having other interests besides your career is huge because you're able to be happy just being like you don't need like and that and that is such a win that is people go their whole lives never experiencing that because they're not brave enough to go on that journey i can look you're looking at someone who is right now starting on that journey not having a lot of work uh having a lot of downtime and figuring out like what's the next move because you've always been busy your career has always defined you yeah and now that and now that it's really not there in some capacity. You're like, okay, well, who am I if I'm not this, right? Mm-hmm. So but being, being, so being brave enough to not care what people think, let go. Because really, what you're talking about is letting go and allowing, letting mm-hmm. go and allowing. That's Ooh. scary. I mean, hey, there's you can read all the books in the world. You can you can listen to all the Deepak Oprah, Ooh. Deepak Chopra, and Oprah. <laughs> It's it's hard. It's so it's so freaking hard. It's hard. Letting letting go and just like that's the biggest thing that I've had to learn is yeah. life is gonna do what life does. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just I, I I've just been studying so many different things, but um, in studying you know the Bible in Ecclesiastes, it does talk about how life is what life is. It's mm-hmm. like the wind. And it's yeah. going to, to blow in whatever direction it's going to blow in. Right. And it, there is no rhyme or reason why a lot of things happen. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the point is to focus on the now. Yeah. Be present. Focus on what, be present and what's happening. And like one, one thing that I do is like, I find little things to be grateful for. That if I find myself enjoying something, I make note of it. Like, oh mm-hmm. God, that, that cold water made my life you know, <laughs> cold water this morning everything that was amazing i looked over at my chair and saw my sequins i was like ah <laughs> like you know it, it's just it's it's a little thing like i'm looking at my my goddaughter right now sleep on the bed and she looks so cute like these are things that make me happy make me make me happy and mm-hmm. we're taught like you have to be in a relationship to be happy. Yeah. You have to have the career. You have to have the house. You got to have the kids. You got to have the dog. You got to da 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 And it's just, there are small things that can make you happy too. It doesn't just have to be big wins. Celebrate the big wins by all means. Go all out. But don't forget the small things too. Yep, I agree. A mutiny is what's next and we're excited for that and i'm and and kudos to you for for using your platform and for using your voice i said in my promo i was like she's got golden pipes and she's using those to spread the good word Uh, (laughs) and and you are you are you mentioned love does amber have time for love 
Uh, yes, she does. Good, good, good. <laughs> I, I, hey, they're, they're at, they're, they they want to know. They, they, it was either ask about love or ask about Leah, and I wasn't going to ask about Leah, so I'm going to ask you about love, okay? All right, listen, look, viewer, I'm keeping it 100 on Jason Unleashed, you guys. This is what we do. This is what we do. Here's the thing, though. Like, I I, I, act, I am actively dating, and there, okay. it's someone that I really, really am interested in that I really, really like, but... You know, hey, we're good thing. <laughs> not exclusive. You know what I'm saying? You're just having fun. In these streets. And, well, no, in, not in these streets, but, you know, you're doing your thing. I love it. Uh, let's take some questions. There's, 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 there's some questions. Let's see if uh, we can get some questions from the viewers. Give me a second. Let me, let me pull up somebody real quick. Come on, iPhone. Amber, my iPhone's garbage. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, I ooh. literally just got a new one. Okay. Let's see. Um, hold on. Amber... Uh, oh, someone wants to know what your thoughts on Lady Gaga's Chromatica. I, and I also want to know, what, would you, why haven't you done American Horror Story, any of the Ryan Murphy properties, and would you go back for a Glee reunion? Um, wait, what was the first part? <laughs> for, for, three questions. How do you feel about Lady Gaga's new album, Chromatica? I haven't listened to it yet. I'm still listening to Like, I dissect bodies of work. Yeah. So like I'm still listening to, to Tiana Taylor's. Um, I was project. just gonna say Tiana. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah. I'm still listening to her project and like feeling it out. Cause I never, when I listen to a project, I never like it the first time around. Like right. first, I have to like listen to it all the way through and like I don't know. I don't know if it's the producer or the writer in me. Like I need to listen to the music. I need to listen to the backgrounds. I need to listen to the lyrical content. Like yeah. I need to feel. Um, all immersive like, experience. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a, I am a, a Lady uh, Gaga fan, though. So mm -hmm. I have, I love her music. I love her voice. I love her artistry. She's incredible. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. Second question was, why haven't we, why, why weren't you one of the witches in American Horror Story? Why haven't we seen you, well, like, we, we need to get Ryan. Ryan is watching right now. Ryan, what's going on? <laughs> I've, I've never <laughs> even auditioned for, for any of those, so. Okay, we're that starting a petition. Be, that will be why. <laughs> and no, I will never do a Glee reunion ever. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So everybody needs to stop asking this question. The I didn't know. Is is no. No. Oh, I, I see. I didn't know people always asked you that. And I did my research and I did not know. I'm, so my look, my bad. I'm sorry. Because it's okay. All the me, time. We get this question all the time. And it's really? Like, okay. No. All right. It's all a right. hard pass. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> it's a hard pass. Well, then, well, with that on that note, though, no glee. But when can we get a full Amber Riley album? It's like when? Can... Me. It's it's overdue. I'm sorry, boo. Like you know, we should have had that years ago. I'm glad it's coming. We you should be like we should have had like a whole I like. Try. Yeah, I need I need people to understand. I was like, I don't. People don't understand the music business. It's literally yeah, yeah. not you just right. going into the studio and then putting on like that's not True. how it works at all. Right. <clears throat> I have tried the last couple of years. I have quit so many times. I've quit music so many times, and every time that I have quit, something has gone viral. <laughs> Somebody asked me to sing somewhere really big, so I'm like, okay, God, you're telling me what? Like, okay. Well, how am I doing it? I finally found my producers. Their names are Sons of Sonics. My my best friend, super producer, Harmony Samuels. It's their little brothers. Um, they're not little, though. They're, like, in their 20s. But um, <laughs> they're grown, grown men. They they like to tell me. Um, but they produced my whole EP. And my cool. EP is coming out very, very soon. Um, because of COVID, we had to reconfigure this rollout. Um, we had a whole plan, and then it just got derailed. Um, so we're picking things back up as LA has, um, opened up a little bit. Sure. Uh, so, and we had to kind of reconfigure what we want to do with the visuals and all that. So we're doing all of that. You'll get visuals. You're going to get, um, a, the new name. Um, you're going to get the name of the EP. There's six songs on there. Um, and it is an, an amazing body of work. I can say so myself. Like, I am proud of the body of work. I'm proud of the music. I'm proud of the, the, the lyrical content, how I wrote it. You're going to know exactly what it is that I've been going through and where my head is at, where my heart is. Like, it's, it's literally, you'll feel me in the music. 
and um, it's not going to be what people expect at all. Cool. But but that be look, look. That's when you have the masterpieces, right? Case in point, 1997. You're a little young, but an artist named Janet Jackson so you think dropped. That I, you think that no. I'm young? Yeah. Okay, I'm older than you, Amber. So how much? How how do you? How old you, do you think you're, you're, I am? Okay, you're a, a fresh 32. A fresh 32. Really? No. no. Okay. Well, so look, I'm older than that. No, you're a fresh 30. <laughs> wow, we're playing the age game here. I, I'm a fresh. I'm not. Look, I'm just. Not, I'm not a millennial. How about okay. that? Okay. Right. Right. I'll take it. But Janet Jackson dropped the velvet rope. Complete yes. departure from what we thought Janet would Jan, what Janet would do, right? Exactly. But her, her best album. So when you go against the grain and do what's right for you, that's when you get the best music. So we're excited for this EP. Can I? Can we get a preview? Can we get a snippet? Maybe a little little something. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping it on lock and key. Okay, man. Like, fine, fine, it has fine. To come, it has to come out in the right way. And, like, some of my friends are in the comments. They're like, yo, it's dope. Like, I let some of my, my friends and my family uh, listen to it. And Cool. I love it. I cannot wait. I will – I'm not even going – no, like, you can listen on Apple Music. I will buy it. Yes, buy it. On buy Apple it. Music. Buy it. I'm using Amber. It has been so enlightening, amazing, and awesome to talk to you. Unmutiny is a new initiative. We're going to see more coming down with that. Guys, get on her Instagram. Get into it. It's amazing. New music is on the way. You're you're happy. You're healthy, um, and you're killing the game. Even in quarantine, Thank you, Amber Jason. Riley. You need a you need a you need a show. You're so good at this. You're they amazing are. at it. Amber, thank really you. Thank amazing. you so much. And 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 I and and I apologize for harassing you and, and stalking you in the DMs, but you have I just no, I'm not. <laughs> honestly the consistency is the consistency helps because I have a lot going on, so it helps. Trust me. Awesome. You stay safe and um and when that new album drops, we'll you will have you back on Jason and Alicia to talk about it. Yes, and all the all sure. the best, Queen. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye.